Hello and welcome, this is Mr. Bus, and I'll continue on with this worksheet here. Before I start with number four, in between stopping the last one and then starting this one, I, I noticed that there is an error in this picture here and I forgot to mention it as I was talking. I didn't catch it, but I caught it then later on. And I was like, wait a minute, why? Okay, so RNA has uracil, not thymine. So uh, these tRNAs here, Okay, this tRNA is CAC to complement GUG, no, no problem with that, uh, but this tRNA here is TAC, no, RNA has U's, it does not have T's, and so that should have been, this T here should have been a U to complement the A on the other side, right? So I don't know why they, I just pulled this picture off the internet, I didn't catch that error, um, and I think there is one here as well. This is tRNA, again, transfer RNA. RNA has uracil, not thymine. So if it's RNA, I don't wanna see any thymine on there. If it's DNA, then you're gonna have thymine, so, right? So thymine up here, I got no problem with that because that's DNA. That's the side of the, that's the DNA template strand. Okay, I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't catch that earlier. Okay, so, but I don't wanna redo the whole video, so we'll just move on. Uh, number four, we're going to start to look at the specific uh, protein structures now. So remember in unit one, uh, we covered um, all the biomolecules and uh, proteins are biomolecules and macromolecules. And then um, amino acids are the kind of the subunit, the monomer. And they have this generalized structure here where you have an amino group, amino functional group, if you remember that. Here you have a, a carboxyl functional group, okay? And I just wanna mention that sometimes, uh, a lot of times, amino acids are shown as with a carboxyl group as a C double bonded to an O and single bonded to an O minus. And that's just because it's saying that this is, uh, it's saying that that's gone. And so it's like, if that's gone, then it's going to be um, O minus. Okay, it's it doesn't it's still a carboxyl group. It's just lost the hydrogen, and it's like that. Okay, and then okay, well, what makes the twenty amino acids unique is it's their side chain. It's just R. R is not um, an atom. R is representing the side chain, whatever the side chain is. Okay, so like on valine, the side chain is three carbons and some hydrogen. Three carbons and some hydrogen would be nonpolar. I don't know if you remember the electronegativity differences between hydrogen and carbon is not very great. So it's a, it's a nonpolar interaction. So this would be a hydrophobic amino acid, right? Water fearing. Um, if you see um, polar, remember water is polar, water is a polar molecule. Water is sticky, it sticks to other polar molecules. So these, like OHs, uh, would cause these amino acids to be polar. These aren't gonna, you're like, what about the, well, these aren't really gonna be a factor because those are gonna be attached to other uh, amino acids through a polypeptide chain. So those, those, those aren't really a factor. Those are where they attach. So you have to look at the side group to determine if it's gonna be polar or nonpolar. Um, charged, if it's going to have a negative or positive charge, here's negative charges and so on. So um, 20 amino acids, remember some of them are unique cases like cysteines have sulfur and cysteines are unique because uh, if they're in the structure, when cysteines fold next to each other in a protein, they actually form something called a disulfur bridge where the two sulfur atoms form a connection. Okay, so there's the 20 amino acids. You don't have to memorize the structure of them, but there they are. And again, just remember, uh, review from unit one, recall that if you take uh, one amino acid, and um, so here's the R group, they're just kind of shown that way, and move it to another one, that you're gonna have um, an H and an OH leave. That's gonna form an H2O, dehydration synthesis reaction, and you're gonna form a, a new bond right there, that line there between the carbon and the nitrogen is a uh, polypeptide bond, and that's a holding the amino acids together, and then the water molecule leaves. If you go in this direction, what's it called? Remember, that's a hydrolysis reaction. 
All right, so big idea, DNA sequence is a sequence of genes. This is just kind of sums it up. Uh, determines RNA, DNA sequence determines RNA sequence. RNA sequence determines amino acid sequence. Amino acid sequence determines how the protein's gonna fold, and that's gonna determine the function of the protein. So that's kind of just the big idea here. Um, and then I just threw in this uh, picture to the right of, again, showing primary, primary sequence, uh, secondary sequence of alpha helix and beta sheet folding, tertiary folding. Remember that is going to be uh, happening more in the endoplasmic reticulum and stuff like that. And then um, quaternary structure when proteins are bonded to other proteins. So let's learn how to uh, read the code. This is going to be more active now. It's probably maybe you're a little bored just listening to me ramble here. But um, so here we go. These are the kinds of problems you're going to have to solve now on quizzes and such like that. So we are going to start with DNA sequences. And I'm not going to give you the double-stranded sequence. So like for number nine, I'm going to give you the single-stranded DNA template strand. Okay, I'm going to say transcribe this. Okay, how do you do that? Remember the complementary nucleotides, right? That's easy, right? So just go ahead and transcribe that. Pause the video. I wanted you to take care of this stuff on your own and then check and see if you did it right or not. One thing I like to do as well when I'm doing this kind of work is I like to break these apart into uh, codons, um, especially if I can identify the methionine codon, and we'll talk about that just uh, next here. So now translate the mRNA into an amino acid sequence. So I'm going to look up my mRNA codons, because this, it, I mean, this code wheel could be written for other, for the DNA or tRNA or something like that, but this is called an mRNA code wheel, right? So you're gonna look up, a very nice color there, there we go. You're gonna look up mRNA codons. So the first one I'm gonna look up is uh, AUG, all right? And I start in the middle and I work my way to the outside of the code wheel. So A, and then that narrows it down to this quadrant here. So then I pick this U, and that narrows me to this quadrant. And then I pick G. And then the amino acid is methionine. And a trick to not have to write the whole amino acid name all the time is to just write the first three letters. So the first amino acid is methionine. Guess what? It will always be. Methionine has got kind of a cool role. It's only coded by AUG mRNA, which means that if you ever see TAC on a DNA sequence, that codes for mRNA, which codes for the start codon. Uh, and the start codon is gonna bring in a tRNA that brings in methionine. Every protein starts with methionine. Every single one. All right, and then do the next. See, again, see if you can do the rest of these and then just check your answers, but I'm gonna go ahead and walk through here. CCU, C, C, U, proline. Next one is U, U, U. Phenylalanine, UCU, serine, UAG, stop. Stop is not an amino acid. Stop means the game's over, okay? So when the, uh, remember we have these, this ribosome complex on the mRNA, we have the tRNAs coming in. When that sequence of UAG is red, it pops off and it's done. And it stops doing this and, and then it'll find another mRNA and find an AUG code on it. Like, it will have to just keep going. I mean, that's what they do. They hop on to the AUG and then when it hits the UAG, it pops off. Now, 
notice on the mRNA code wheel, if you think about this, um, if there's four nucleotides, A, G, C, and U, and there's three letters in a codon, then you have four to the third is how many possibilities you have for sequences. So there's only 64, because four to the third is 64. Four times four is 16, times four is 64. There's 64 possible codons. So this mRNA code wheel has them all. It has all 64 possibilities, okay? And notice there's only 20 amino acids. So there's going to be multiple codes for amino acids, right? So like proline is coded by all four of these, CCU, CCC, CCA, CCG, all right? And then also, I'm not sure if proline's on here twice, but you'll find that some of the amino acids are even on here twice. Um, like arginine, right? And so um, just be aware of that. There's multiple stop codons. There's multiple codons for the various amino acids, except for like some of them, like especially I'll point out again, methionine only has one. So go ahead and do the next one as practice. I'll go ahead and do it um, kind of silently. Um, so you can just kind of fast forward to the, the end when I have it solved here. But go ahead and do this first on your own. Okay, so I really only had it because I already, I mean, I've memorized AUG is the start codon and UAG is a stop codon. So I really just had to figure out valine, proline, and serine. Um, a normal protein is going to be longer than that, but we're just practicing. Uh, some review questions. Which part of the mRNA? Again, pause the video, do these on your own then check your answers. If you're just, I think you can answer these on your own. In class, I would say I would give people 10 minutes to work on this, then I would go over the answers. You're gonna learn better that way. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the answers now, so hopefully, hopefully now this is done for you. 13A, which part of the mRNA gets translated, introns or exons? Exons do. What are two other post-translational modifications? The five prime GTP cap and the three prime poly A tail. What are the six mRNA codons that will code for serine? So UCU, UCA, UCA, <laughs> these ones. And there's gonna be some more. And then AGC and AGU. How many mRNA codons code for tryptophan? Okay, let's find tryptophan on here. That's the one they always talk about, like Thanksgiving. Turkeys have a lot of tryptophan in them and they make you t it makes you tired and sleepy. It's an amino acid. Looks like just one. It'd be U, G, G. Methionine is always the first amino acid in, in a new protein. What DNA sequence will result in an mRNA uh, Methionine code, the DNA sequence would be TAC. The DNA sequence would be TAC. If an mRNA codon is CAU, what is the tRNA anticodon? Uh, okay, so the tRNA anticodon, what's, what's complementary to C? G. What's complementary to A? U. And what's complementary to U? A. So the G and the C would connect, the A and the U would connect, and the U and the A would connect. What amino acid will this carry? So I have to look up the mRNA codon CAU. Histidine. What are three types of RNA? mRNA, 
R RNA, T RNA, and I, I mean, I went over in the video. Messenger RNA carries a message out of the nucleus, transfer RNA, uh, brings an amino acid into the ribosome. Ribosomal RNA is the structure that holds it all together. All right. And no, now, um, reverse transcription, okay, is kind of, okay, stop what we've been learning. That's, that's transcription and translation, okay? That's where you take the RNA out of the nucleus and you make a protein. Reverse transcription is specific to a process that happens with viruses and viruses that contain RNA rather than DNA. So a virus like will, um, well, this is in the picture here, a virus called a retrovirus, okay? Because it goes backwards, RNA DNA, which is rare, kind of a weird thing. So the virus, viruses are just, I mean, crazy cool in terms of to study. Obviously they're terrible when you get sick and stuff like that. Um, they're they're part of life and they do many different things and are, are viruses themselves alive no because they don't have cellular machinery they rely on living cells to replicate but a virus will bind and uh, enter a cell okay and then it will hijack the cell but before it does that if it's a retrovirus um, and a retrovirus is going to incorporate its dna into your dna okay but it's, it starts with um, having to take its, um, its genetic information. So it's got a protein coat, it's got some cellular markers, and it's got a protein coat, and that protein coat breaks apart and it, it leaves, it, um, the RNA enters the cell, and then the viral RNA is in the cytoplasm, right, where you have cellular machinery and stuff like that, but it also contains its own proteins to turn that viral RNA into a, a little, teeny little code of DNA, double-stranded, that's DNA. So reverse is to go from RNA to DNA, okay? And then even though I said DNA can't leave the nucleus, well, this is a very small section of DNA, okay, that the virus was carrying, so it's still a small enough particle to um, integrate and in enter the, the nucleus. And then it like breaks apart your DNA adds its code what is that code for it codes for the the virus okay so it's going to then go in your nucleus and then once it's in your nucleus then it's going to go through that whole process okay now that it's in your nucleus the virus is gone like the virus itself is gone all this machinery is gone all that's left though is it has taken its dna and placed it inside your dna okay and now transcription now the normal processes of now we can have transcription make mrna and we can have translation and make uh, proteins. What proteins? Virus proteins. So your cells get taken over, turn into factories for making viral proteins and virus, and then your cell basically will explode, releasing thousands and thousands of new viruses um, to then infect other cells and do the same process over and over again. But reverse transcription means you go from RNA to DNA, and the fact that it's a retrovirus, I'll, I wanna be clear, means that it incorporates its DNA into your virus, er, into your, <laughs> its DNA into your DNA inside the nucleus. Some retroviruses will do that and stay dormant for years. Could be even decades.